In this video, you're gonna learn four ways that any attorney can use artificial intelligence to supercharge yourself and get amazing results for your clients. I interviewed attorney Keith Whitten and he went over exactly how he uses artificial intelligence to supercharge his law firm. This is one you don't wanna miss. You know, you had indicated that you're using AI in a lot of interesting ways to grow your criminal defense law firm. And I was really interested to just kind of hear about what you're doing. If you could just kind of share some of that, that, that'd that be really cool. Yeah. So let me just go ahead and you've really picked a good time to talk to me about it. So the first thing that I've done or the, I guess, really important things when it comes to the marketing side of things. I have had a book waiting in the wings since around COVID. One of my legal assistants at the time went through and created what I called the big book of questions. And I went through and I'd go through and I'd answer all of them and just got to a point where I was, there were some questions that I didn't really know how to answer really well, or didn't have a good idea on how to answer. And then Ethan introduced me to chat GPT and I decided one weekend, okay, I've got, you know, 20 questions that I just have been putting off answering or don't know a good way to answer. So I put them in chat GPT. I prompted it and said, you are a criminal defense lawyer in, you know, in Louisiana, your reader has a high school education and you are writing a book that is informative, but also is easy to understand for a potential client or potential client's family member answer this question. And so I prompted it, put the question in, it spit out an answer, copy, paste into my my word processor and rolled with it. And so that book I think is with my um, my creative person right now, but the content for that book is by and large done. The other thing is just sending emails and things like that. I have a chat GPT plugin already in Gmail. I haven't used it a whole lot, but what I do use it for is once I have an idea in my email, I'll copy and paste in chat GPT said, you are a criminal defense lawyer. You are writing to a prosecutor, rewrite this in a clear and grammatically correct way for a prosecutor or for a busy judge. And it spits it back out. Then for motion writing, we have used law clerk a lot lately. There was a motion to suppress that came in that someone on law clerk had written, which for the audience or for the viewer out there, law clerk is like the Fiverr or the Upwork for legal projects. So motions, memos, demand letters, et cetera. There was a motion to suppress that came back and it was just not, it was was bad, frankly. I, I hated it. I scrapped the whole thing But I took what that person had written and I stuck it in chat GPT and I said, write this in paragraphs in a way that is going to be easy to read for a busy judge. And of course, plugged in the prompts that you are a criminal defense lawyer. You represent someone accused of a DWI. You want to tease out these facts. And so it spit that out. I copy and pasted. And then I said, "Okay, I need some more about this case and that case. And so I would say. Tell me more about this case. Tell me more about this case or tell me more about this particular thing in this case. Has there been any authority that's overruled this case? And Chad GBT is only current through 2021. So, you know, there's still some legal research involved on my part. But when it came to summarizing things in a way that is appropriate for your audience or for your reader, that's where Chad GBT has really, really come in handy. And finally, I think that whenever we start this conversation, I alluded to the fact that this is a great time for you now to be talking about this because I'm using it a lot right now to get ready for a murder trial that I have next week. The murder trial is very reminiscent of uh, Trayvon Martin and George Floyd. The ultimate question is, did the, the person accused of murder act in self-defense. I believe that my client acted in self-defense and I believe the way that he acted in self-defense is very similar to the way that George Floyd allegedly acted in self-defense. 
And so I've taken Chat GPT and I've said, tell me about George Floyd's case. Tell me about this. Tell me about the opening statements. What did the prosecution do wrong? What did the prosecution point out and say, this is, is what's so strong about our case? What did Marco Mera and his team say? No, this is what's right about our case. What were some of the key points from that case? What did they cross-examine the officers about? While I did ask it for specific cross-examination transcripts and things like that, it wasn't able to produce that. But it was able to say, okay, Marco Mera or other people on the George Floyd defense team teased out these points in cross-examination, teased out these points in closing statement. And I was like, okay, this gives me a really good foundation to work from. The other thing in Louisiana, our jury selection process in state court, we get to talk to the jurors ourselves in that jury selection process to see who the viable jurors would be for us or who we think would be a good juror for us. And understanding self-defense along with understanding reasonable doubt and the fact that the state carries the burden. But I went to the chat GPT playground and I you know, started saying, look, give me jury selection questions about self-defense. You are a criminal defense lawyer in Louisiana defending someone who is accused of murder, but you believe acted in self-defense. Your prospective juror has a average high school education, uh, things like that. And it was able to start spitting out answer after, or I'm sorry, not answer, but question after question for possible jury selection questions. And then I said, okay, well, tell me about what questions I should ask that kind of person to make sure they understand reasonable doubt. Give me a story about self-defense. Give me a story about reasonable doubt to illustrate this for someone who has a high school education. Those are the ways that I've used chat GPT recently in, in my practice, both from, I think we've covered everything from a marketing end and content creation end down to a, um, down to, you know, using it right there in the heat of trial. Yeah. And that that's amazing. What's really interesting about that is that you're not saying chat GPT go answer all these questions for me. What you're really doing is you're prompting ChatGPT to allow you to, I call it supercharging yourself. Yes. Because this is all information that you really could, you could have written emails yourself. You could go find this information, but what you're doing, what ChatGPT allows you to do is it allows you to just save so much time. Like all the information, for example, about um, the George Floyd trials and the Trayvon Martin trials is all publicly available. You probably mm -hmm. could go back and watch the videos and figure out what they did. But mm -hmm. in a couple of strokes of, of your fingers, you're able to just get all those key points, you know? Yes. And that's why, like, one thing I always talk about chat GPT is that the most important thing you can do is the prompt. It's mm -hmm. garbage in, garbage out. If you don't give it good prompts, you're not going to get good stuff. But if you give it all the context, like you just said, like you're mm -hmm. saying, you're a criminal defense attorney, you're trying to write for a judge who's very busy, make sure that it's very easily written, make sure that it's in paragraphs. Here's this, the, the information on the case. When you actually give it a large amount of information, what you get out of it is pretty amazing. So yes. what are the what are some of the, the ways that you actually set your prompts when you're when you're creating chat GPT? And then I'll tell you how I do mine. I've done very little research or work on the prompting itself or how to expand on the prompting. My information about prompting comes from mostly, I believe his name is Max Mayer on YouTube. And so he put out a lot of Chad GBT content, or at least what stuck with me, I should say, were plugins and prompts. And so while we talk about plugins, the prompts that I've learned that work for me are number one, saying who you are. Chad GPT, you are this, okay? You're not just a criminal defense lawyer. You're a criminal defense lawyer in Louisiana, or you are a criminal defense lawyer even in the Southeast, because Louisiana could even be split along, you know, Interstate Interstate 10, where you have a a Southern Louisiana, which is going to be, you know, a Cajun, a Creole influence, um, and then you have a North Louisiana. It's it's gonna it's just going to be different. It's going to be maybe a little bit more like what you would find in an East Texas, a Southern Arkansas. Make sure you're you're aware of who your audience is because your audience in the Southeast United States is going to be different from what's going to be in you know in California. You have to you have to put in the mindset for the audience that you're writing to um, or speaking to. The high school education is important. 
or, or just the, the education level in general, because a busy judge is going to read different, understand different than someone who has a high school education and works in a trade day to day. Chat GPT has a good way of changing the way that it communicates things. If I'm talking about my jury selection questions, particularly my stories, give me a story to illustrate the concept of reasonable doubt. And I say that, okay, explain this to someone who is in high school versus someone who has an eighth grade reading level or a sixth, sixth grade reading level. Those are two very different answers. And while we could probably go to, you know, a census or something like that and find that most Americans in general have a reading level somewhere around the sixth to ninth grade, whenever you actually look at those stories and you say it out loud, sounds like you're talking down to them. And that's the last thing I want. The high school education is very much a level that you and I and really anybody else except for, I guess, Neil deGrasse Tyson is going to be speak, uh, comfortable speaking at. So um, until they put Neil deGrasse Tyson uh, and some law professors on my, on my possible juries, I don't have to worry very much. I think I'm, I'm comfortable with the high school, high school level of education for prospective jurors, prospective clients, things like that. Yeah, I've always heard it's an eighth grade level is where the average American reads at. It's an eighth grade level. So I do this well, even when I'm creating content for lawyers, I put everything at an eighth grade level because a confused mind always says no. So mm -hmm. e even when you're dealing with, even when you're talking to someone who's as a very high level of education, like a judge or a lawyer, you still need to make it as easy as possible for them to consume the content. You know, I will typically open up a Google doc and my prompts are sometimes an entire page where I'm just, I, I, I kind of do the who, what, where, when, why, that whole thing for every scenario that I'm trying to that I'm trying to have it create content for me and I found that the more information I can feed into there and the more backstory the more context then the output is just absolutely incredible but again the more information you give it the the kind of closer you can get it into exactly what you're looking for it's kind of like a game of 20 questions just think about what are all the questions that you would need another cool thing you can do is you can actually actually ask chat gpt what information do you need from me to create the best possible motion. You could ask that okay. question as well. And it'll actually kick out 20 questions and then you can go in there and answer those as well to even get better prompts. So you can, okay. use, yeah, you can use ChatGPT to enhance your prompts, which is really cool as well. Okay, I did not know that. So that's a, that's a trick that I've learned. Yeah, so, try that out. That'd be pretty cool. So absolutely will. Um, I think that you need to go to YouTube and look for content creators that have that that have a, a decent sized following and see what they're doing in terms of whether it be plugins or productivity hacks once you get comfortable with using this stuff not in a way to like like you said in a way that supercharges you the way that I think about it particularly in terms of prepping for trial or prepping for jury selection or whatever it may be, it gets to be sort of my, my mastermind in that regard. And don't get me wrong, I still do this. My best friend is coming over tonight to help me get ready for this trial that's starting next week. But it is, it's my mastermind right there where I can say, I can plug in ideas and it can spit something back out that's useful. If you use it in that way, I think that you're going to be not only you're going to be leaps and bounds ahead of the competition or in my case, the prosecution, because the prosecution isn't going to think to, oh, heck, what do I do about this fact that just came out? What do I do about this detail that just came out? Um, I fully intend to have my computer open the entire time while while in trial. And the way that I try a case is I always have a notepad that is dedicated to, oh, these are really important points that I need to make sure that I put into my closing argument. Well, guess what? Now I can copy and paste those points into chat GPT and I can say, these are really important points that came out during my trial, you know, prompted accordingly and say, you know, help me write a closing statement based off these points. And then now I know that, okay, what other questions do I need to answer about my case that would help you write a better closing statement. It has the potential to number one, supercharge your productivity, supercharge your creativity, 
puts you head and shoulders above not only the casual user, puts you infinitely or exponentially ahead of the competition, whether that be in the courtroom or on the marketing side of things that aren't using the technology right now. You know, one thing that's cool about creativity is that um, I always find that stories and analogies are the best way to emphasize a point. That's why I tell so many stories and analogies in all of my content. And I talked to a criminal defense, or sorry, a personal injury attorney one time, and he was telling me about how he made this analogy that was that was great, and it was about uh, traumatic brain injuries, mm-hmm. and he likened it to football, and he was telling me that a lot of times what happens in a car accident is the car will not be that damaged. So because there's not a lot of damage to the car, the insurance company is going to argue, well, the occupant couldn't have been that injured because there's really no damage to the car. So how how injured could they be? So the analogy that he uses during trials is a football helmet, like a NFL or a college football helmet, where we see evidence now of all of these players that have severe traumatic brain injuries, but their helmets are never destroyed. What's interesting is that he uses that analogy and he said it just it, it just does great in mm-hmm. trial. So what you can do is you can say, hey, listen, I need an analogy that can relate this one thing to another thing. And mm-hmm. ChatGPT will give you some really good stuff. And then from there, you can, it'll kind of, kind of uh, spark more ideas. And then you can come up with really, really powerful visuals that you can paint in their head that will make you much more persuasive, which I think is, is something that is, is a tool that now everybody has at their disposal, whereas before creativity was not something that everybody had. Yes. All right. Well, Keith, thank you so much for coming on here. I really, really appreciate it. Um, and uh, you know, I think what you what you're you're sharing puts you ahead of 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 so many attorneys and anyone that's smart enough to to kind of try to do what you're doing as well is gonna have a lot of success. So thank you so much for coming on here. 